What is ChatGPT and how can you use it to grow your real estate business? That's what we're discussing in episode 47 of Mega Real Estate Talk. Let's go. You're listening to Mega Real Estate Talk with Jared Davis and Galen Parker, your source for an honest, insightful look into Central Virginia's real estate market. Combined, Jared and Galen have over 20 years sales experience, as well as hundreds of testimonials from clients past and present who rely on them for advice and assistance when buying and selling homes in today's incredibly hot and competitive real estate market. And now, your hosts, Jared Davis and Galen Parker. I am... Jared Davis. And I'm still Galen Parker. How you doing, buddy? Uh, you know, I've been better. I'm going to be honest with you. What What's going on in your life? <sighs> you know, so in the team text, we've got agents and they say like, hey, what happens with um, when another, when your client get, uses another agent mm. and you kind of get hosed and all that kind of stuff. And we say, well, you know, it's definitely going to happen. Obviously, if you're more seasons, it's not going to happen as much because you build these lasting relationships with you. But recently I just found out that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> the relationships that you've solidified, solidified with people over time. Someone screw you, buddy? They're still going to, um, let's not say that word. Let's say uh, they thoughtlessly move forward in an endeavor that you've been dedicating to them for the past Two 24 years? months Oof. of your life. But it happens. Uh, I saw on Facebook a client, they posted like, ah, we're signing, we're closing today. And I was like, well, it's pretty bad when you're Facebook friends too, isn't it? Right, and I've commented on their stuff. They've commented on my stuff. So I like I typed and I was like, "Hey, uh, what what's going on? Did you, did you buy a house?" And he was just like, "Yeah, things were moving." <laughs> Thankfully, you so did all those videos fast. on neighborhoods that we watched, and yeah. it let us narrow down what we wanted without you. Uh, yeah, and it's like <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I've shown them. You know how far this goes back? Oh, what is? Uh, remember the condo that you had over? Um, the girl, she's from South Africa. She's married to, uh, he's got like blonde hair. I can't remember his name right now. Nice dude. But, uh, I did an open house on their like condo, like two years before COVID. Wow. Um, I showed them that I'd been showing the house before that. I showed them a house like, like probably a year and a half ago. Uh, then that house went on for sale. And then I like try to go to the, get the listing appointment. I met, sent the message like, "Hey guys, this might be coming on the market." Like all this dialogue over the past mm. two years, and just to be thrown by the wayside like a so piece of gutter trash. Do a sopranos on them. So you're gonna are you gonna are you gonna try to see the are you gonna look at the house and see if it was like just a double represent and they just waived representation or see if they went with another agent. I'm gonna. Or do you just not want your heart to hurt and just leave it alone. <sighs> Mentally. I'm saying I'm not going to do. You're going to do it. I'm going to do all of it. You're going to ask Chat gonna, GPT who, where Chat the house GPT is. Find their house. To, like, <laughs> how do I <laughs> track how do, down this? How do person? I track this human uh, down? <laughs> That's what I'm but, saying. Um, You're going to do a soprano. It, it <laughs> sounds like a double representation, and probably what it is. The agent like, was just oh, like, "Oh, well, you don't need them." Yeah, if you, if you re write with me we'll right now, we can deal. just do this thing, move quick, and I can tell you. And it's just like shady. none of that is true. To be honest with you, like, just shady. So. It's just a nice reminder that it doesn't matter how hard you work. There's always people that don't care. Ugh. Sorry, buddy. I, I have nothing else. I, my, my, my life's pretty good. It most of the time is. Windows went in my house. That's exciting. What a jabroni. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> my leg's pretty green. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, talked, green. we talked about this the other night. You know it's not. I, Friday night. I've just got to cheer this podcast up. Friday night I was down in the dumps. But <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bringing the dumps to the <laughs> podcast. So we're, we're, just, we're, we're good. Oh, were you upset that I didn't call, uh, text you back? I, Mike texts me at like 11 o'clock at night and he's like, hey, call me right now. And I'm like, I can't talk. Can you text me? And then he didn't do anything. I just, I fell asleep. <laughs> it's just like, what did you want that you're literally Mike's like, a great one was like, hey, uh, text Max right now. And then he'll like call you. And you're like, and like, hey, don't call me. Text me. And he's like, all right, like, cool. Hey, I saw you just got your text. Hey, bud. I I'm like, how you doing? He's like, oh, so many people keep calling me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> you're That's crazy. <laughs> So what are we talking about today? All right, so we're not going to deep dive. We're going to talk about it, then we're going to deep dive. Mike's getting real excited on the button. I'm just uh, doing a reference before we deep dive. Um, we're talking. We're talking about the new Skynet, and I, I'm excited. You're excited. We've popped out reels about it. There's mm. YouTube talk about it. Um, we're talking about Chat GPT. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say the GPT. It's generative pre-training transformer. But I like I keep on like GPT, GPT, yeah, yeah. but GPT. it is. So cool. And every person I've talked to over the past weekend, uh, trying to explain like 
what they could do, even if they're not in real estate, and tell mm-hmm. them like, what could you do? Like, do you like recipes? Well, hey, give me eight recipes on how to make you know such and Bald such. Bald eagle, so. and it'll do it. Like whatever. <laughs> it does, it does. Hey, teach it does. me how to make a meal of kittens and bald yeah, eagles. It, it, it's crazy. It's the wildest thing. You're like, Chat I only want to. I want to eat only endangered species. Can you tell oh, me what the man. easiest way to do that? So is? we've got Chat GPT up, and we're a little bit later in the show. We're going to fire off some things uh, just to see how uh, how nuanced this thing is. I love it. All right, Mike, give us our deep dive intro music let's go all right so we should first tell the people what chat gpt really is all in right. a nutshell because hopefully if you're listening to this you know you probably already know you've I mean, searched chat gpt find it? uh it's been so it's the we're in the know so chat gpt just if you don't know it's the largest fastest growing just anything software app whatever ever made so chat gpt hit a million users in four days four days if you look up the stats on pinterest and instagram and facebook and all these other things this hit a million users faster than all of those platforms it's the fastest growing platform ever invented and so yeah word of mouth spread fast that's how i heard about it a friend told me uh, he does like computer coding and IT work, and he was like, "Yeah, this thing's crazy." I just made it code something for a buddy the other day, and he like showed it to me, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is incredible!" So essentially, if you don't know what it is, where do they find the website? What is it? It's AI. What is it? AI. So you can go to chat dot open ai dot com got it. So chat dot open ai dot com is where you'll find it. Right now, it's free to the public to use who knows how long that will last right. i don't really know where the vision is for this guy's company and how he's going to integrate it in charge but for right now it is free to use it is an open essentially it's a chat bot so it mm-hmm. gives you a text box you can chat in whatever you want and it can think in code numbers it can think in english it, it, it essentially formulates thoughts back to you and you can have a full conversation about anything it's fully offline so as of 2021, that's where all the data was pulled from. So it's not going to pull anything newer than 2021. So you have to keep that in mind. But that's about the you nutshell. You can still learn, yeah. I mean, right, that's like the simplest nutshell. I mean, I mean, literally, you can ask it anything. So as you were talking, I asked chat. Uh, chat GPT, GPT. Chat Galen. GPT. It's, it's like the it's GP, a tongue It's the GP. Which is Bobby. crazy because it's, it's his initials. initials. So the G- <laughs> chat GPT, I asked it, what are you? And it responded, I am a generative pre-training transformer. Uh, It is the type of artificial intelligence model that has been developed to generate human-like text. GPT models are trained on a large data set and can be used to fine-tune for specific tasks such as translation, summarization, or language modeling. And I think what I love so much about it is that um, you can ask it a question and the response is contextual in the sense that, like, it makes sense. It's like you're having a conversation. Sometimes Mm -hmm. you'll hit something, you'll ask for it in, like, the response is like, you need to move. And it's like, man, this clearly is a robot doing this. With ChatGPT, I like that. In some like versions of it, you've got to actually like click the button saying, like, I know that this is an AI and not a person. Yeah. So like, don't fall in love with it. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm not real. But um, we were last week we were talking about like just the ability to like summarize material. Oh yeah. Um, I was like just adding pages into it and just saying like hey highlight the top 10 points or just Mm -hmm. give me 10 points from it and it was spitting out like all right here's what you should know about this you know arbitrary piece of documentation that you inserted to me so i'm like stuff like that it's like i'm i get so excited so you uploaded it i copied and pasted i just said i said hey chat gpt here's the text i need you to give me five points and it was like do 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 one two three four five yeah so we'll break into that because that's actually a real estate thing we can use but just in general you can use it for all kinds of things. So uh, you want recipes, it'll give you recipes. Translations. Translations, legal stuff. I mean, I think this has the ability to replace mm, 85% of attorneys <laughs> out there. Because you think about it, you have a lot of big-name attorneys that are going to go to court, they're going to arbitrate, they're going to litigate, and yada, yada, yada. You have also a lot of lawyers that literally just make their living drafting up simple legal documents, mm-hmm. right? They don't go to court. They don't, you know, fight anybody. They're just like, oh, you need a will. Okay. ChatGPT pretty much can do all of this legal stuff for you. And it still has 
uh, the guard the guard on it because I asked it for a will uh, the other day and it wouldn't give me one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was like it is. We are not a legal entity. You, yeah. I was like, ah. But what's interesting is like you can ask it legal questions yep. and it knows essentially as much as a lawyer does. So if not more, like a lawyer typed something in it the other day. He'd been in the business for like forty years and it, he, I think he was doing. Um, uh, what do you call the law when you when someone gets hurt? Like uh, like uh, I guess it was either malpractice or it was something like that. And okay. he was saying how the income that you make on the case should be scalable. And it was some kind of argument. And he asked ChatGPT to explain to him why his income should be scalable in his form of law. And it essentially spit out the answer that he would give as a guy that had been in the business for 40 years. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. It's very, very exciting. I, when I think about it, we'll, we'll talk more about how this affects your real estate business. But... I go back in my mind and think about the guys who, when they first started using Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And they probably thought like, oh, this is cool. And then like someone was like, what could we do if we started running ads for my real estate business to target locations? Like how excited yeah. were they when that first happened? And it was like, now we are kind of in that area. Where we're just like, oh my goodness, we could start asking you questions and see how it's going to break down things for us. There's certain things I was thinking about the other day of like how, how to use this for real estate. We'll, we'll, we'll dive in. Um, outside of real estate, you know, we listed summarizations, translations, recipes, uh, explanations. What are some other things you think? Yeah, I mean, even if you don't understand a subject, I mean, you can say, you know, explain nuclear fission to me in mm -hmm. the most simple way possible, right? And it'll, it'll do that for you. Okay, I like that. You know, so if there's just a subject that you're not aware of, again, we'll get into that with the real estate side too. All of these things can, can channel into real estate. That's why I want to do this podcast to see, are you actually thinking about all the ways that you could be using this in real estate, right? Um, but then you can also say, you know, give me whatever, a blog post on this or mm. whatever on that. And then you could say like, rewrite it differently and it'll do it again with different words, right? Yeah. And Man, so if that, you're in college and you need to write a paper real fast. Yeah. So that's been a huge thing in the news has been, um, people using it for, for, for essays and essentially it being so good because it doesn't uh, duplicate things and doesn't replicate things that there's really a 99% accuracy on trying to be able to tell that it came from chat GPT. So like a kid just got in trouble, but the only reason was because the professor was, you know, suspicious, but he, like, could, an idiot. but he couldn't prove it when he put <laughs> it into his AI generative software that's supposed to find that stuff. So the only reason the kid got in trouble was because the kid fessed up on himself and was like, yeah, I did it. But otherwise, like it, there wouldn't have. Now, another kid who's like looks like he's 12 just wrote a software that's supposed to be able to detect if it came from ChatGPT, and it looks for two identifying factors. So that's already come out. Even though ChatGPT's only been out a week, this kid that's like 11. The most unpopular kid in America. <laughs> yeah. uh, just ruined it for Narc. everyone. He's Worldwide like, you know what Narc. we need teachers? Because <laughs> he's like the smartest kid. He's like, why are these idiots getting high grades like me? He's like, I got an idea. He's like, he's I like, got to put them back on the tech. totem pole. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he used ChatGPT. He's like, ChatGPT, write a code for me. To do it. Like, that would be so amazing. Um, I, I used my old AI, uh, mm -hmm. Alexa, yesterday, and I said, uh, Alexa, what is ChatGPT? And she immediately just showed me a video of a news article about kids cheating mm -hmm. uh, using And I was like, that's actually pretty funny. Like, I would be that kid for sure. Like, be smart. Work smarter, not harder. What was it like? Uh, something for dummies. Remember those old books mm -hmm. that have and kids like you still have to read those and be like, all right, let's see if I can. Yeah. Now it's just like. I mean, think about it. We're using it in our everyday life right now to make life easier. So why wouldn't a kid use it to make school easier? They're like, you shouldn't use because when you get when you older, get older, you'll, you're, you'll, you'll know it. how to use this well in life, which you'll use all the time. It's like, I'm already using it. <laughs> yeah. I'm already using the it. The teachers are like, grade these students essays. Like, Exactly. Right I mean, it, it, right. it is wild um, what what can happen. And, um, and Jared, you, last week when you were talking about it, explain to everyone kind of the whole picture. Um, many pictures. Can yes. Create, like, so so there's another software that the company actually owns that creates images. And so you can essentially tell it you want a picture of a rabbit standing on an elephant smoking a cigar on the top of Mount Everest. And then it gives it to you. And then, and then you can say, hey, I want 11 more versions of it. What? Yeah. And then it does 11 more, like, instantly. And then you have 11 versions of that insane thing that you just asked it to do. And then you could be like, uh, I want you to do it in the style of Picasso. And then it does it. And it's insane. And so, now think. What's that called? 
uh, I forget what their picture software is, but uh, you could probably look it up and find it real quick. But so the, the the thought process though is this gets deeper and deeper. I know it seems like we're off the subject of real estate, so hopefully you're still listening in and you're just interested in the subject before we get into the stuff. You can and if you're not interested in the subject, you're definitely going to listen to us when we talk about how to apply exactly. real estate. Yeah, this is way more interesting than the real estate stuff. We're <laughs> like, this is how you boringly use it to make house sales, but the technology is incredible because hypothetically when you were a kid you could think about like a picture book right where you would flip through it and it would it would move and our brains don't know the difference between those pictures and actual video so hypothetically if chat gpt can create a picture of whatever we wanted to create then it could create millions of pictures very quickly which could create video which means at some point the technology could get good enough like deep fake technology right we all know about deep fake right where you just do something and it puts Tom Cruise face on your face and it looks like Tom Cruise is doing it. But there's all of these softwares now that now replicate the voice of said person or replicate the deep fake or replicate the video. So at some point, hypothetically, the AI could be so good that I could say, I want to see Galen writing an elephant, right? And nice. I want him to be yelling in happiness over it and talking about how much he loves me. And it's going to be his voice and it's going to look like Galen and you you're not going to tell the, the, the difference. film we have of me doing those <laughs> yeah. things. Well, I have a program that if you didn't want to be on camera that, that we could pick a person doesn't like what, you know, black, white, you know, whatever mm -hmm. and uh, type in the text and yep. then they spit it out like you like they're on camera yeah, yeah. exactly you know, you know, so and it could be any language too so this is and then so principally yeah it goes it, it takes into account all of that then but then you think with the pictures you could also say hey i run a real estate company i need a logo for my company the davis group uh, I want it to incorporate houses or keys or this or that. And then hypothetically, you, you could be able to build logos out. Like someone asked it the, the other day, like in chat, be GPT, actually, not even the picture side of things, um, create, recreate Twitter's logo for me. But it's, it's in chat, right? So it has to put it into a code context. But you're able to then paste that code into whatever area it is that turns it back into so even ChatGPT, not the picture generator, mm -hmm. can still generate images through code. So it, it's 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 wild. So that's a little bit about ChatGPT. We should jump into now how you use it in your real estate business. All right. All right. I think first thing we talk about is is something that's very simple, and that's content generation. Yeah. Because you talked about pasting an article in to it, and so here's a couple of things that we've been doing that I think works fantastically if you're trying to either create YouTube videos, if you're doing Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, whatever, reels, all of that stuff. If you're looking for short form content, uh, if you're doing blog posts, whatever, you can essentially look up uh, an article on your market. Let's say you want to go local, just give you an example, but it could be on anything. It could be on the nationwide housing market. You could take that article, you can copy the entire article, paste it into ChatGPT, and then essentially, like Galen had mentioned earlier, the first thing you can ask for is put this into 10 key points for me. Take the 10 key points of this article right now. So you say, take the 10 key points and reset them. Take the 10 key points and just give it to me summarized. And it will do that. So it'll summarize the article without you even having to read it. Now, technically, you should read it to see if it's good information. But even if you didn't want to, you just be like, hey, grab the, the 10 key points out of this thing. So I did one about Richmond the other day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, what are the key 10 key points of this thing because it was like reasons why moving to Richmond's good. And then it, it just busted out. There's, you know, VCU medical. So you got a big medical division. You got the college. You've got, you know, your average rental price. All that stuff breaks down. And now I have 10 key points where I could say, man, I'm going to do a reel that says, here's 10 reasons that you should move to Richmond, Virginia. And then I can bust that out. The flip side is, say I've got a website and I'm trying to generate content, I could also say, hey, create a three-paragraph blog post based on all of the information in this article, and it won't plagiarize any of it, but it'll, it'll grab all of the key new. points and create a new article in three paragraphs that you could then take, and you could put it up on your website, right? Then you could say, hey, uh, give me the benefits of this, and then what are the... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll use a different one instead of the article. Okay. One thing I did the other day was... Um, I asked it if it knew what the Burr method was, which is buy, renovate, rent, refinance, right, repeat, right, for investors. So I asked this thing. It's completely offline. Do you know what the Burr method is? And then it says, oh, are you referring to buy, rent, 
rehab, re- repeat, whatever. <laughs> yes, I am. And I was like, I am. And then I asked it, I said, what are, the, what are the key benefits of doing this? And then it spits it out. So then it's like, one, you know, extra equity in your house when you're done. Two, like, and it gives it all to you. Then you're like, well, what are the risks that I have to worry about? And then it's like, one, and then it breaks it all down. So just right there, I know about the burr. I've got videos on burr. I've owned a bunch of houses that we've burred, but a lot of agents don't. So it could be a subject. I'm just using that as the example where you could actually have it explain it to you. So then you have a reel on what is the burr method? Well, it means to buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Why is this good, right? Check out my next reel, your next reel. Hey, if you saw my last thing on the burr and you want to get into it, here's 10 benefits of it, right? One, two, three, four. Then it's like, hey, you saw my last, but it can't be all good, right? What are the five things you should look out for when you burr a property? <laughs> one, two. Now I just created three pieces of content right off of one conversation. Are you guys put a disclaimer? <laughs> that this is from ChatGPT and not you. And if I mean, you got like 10 points, you'd be like, oh, one. And then it'd be like, next, stay tuned for, you know, Volume yeah. two. Of, so hopefully you know, if you're yeah. listening to this, your mind is cranking already because I don't think I slept for like three days when I found this. this <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh my God. I was click just, at so many buttons. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then I asked it, I was like, but then I did a reel. If you follow us, me on Instagram, underscore, underscore the Davis group. Uh, I did a reel on the BARC method, which you don't really hear the acronym a lot, but uh, stuff's coming back. Subject to assumptions and essentially is, is buying by assuming and then renting and then keeping. But again, this software only goes up to 2021. So then I asked it, I said, do you know what the BARC method is? And it was honest. It says, I'm, I'm actually not sure. Is that an acronym for something? And then I said, yes, it just stands for, you know, buy, assume, rent, keep. And then from just telling it that, it was able to break down all of the steps and understand what I was asking it about with the act. So then it was like, okay, now I know I'm going to put that into my my digital AI head that this is what this stands for, but this is what you're talking about. And then I could be like, is, what are the benefits? And then it still broke down the benefits, even though 30 seconds ago it didn't know the acronym. Um, so that's that's a huge thing. So it's constantly learning too. It's learning, I think, off of off of the people using it, but it's not pulling data anymore. So it gathered data up until 2021, and then it's com- it works completely offline. But I imagine as you have conversations with it, it's probably storing those conversations and learning from the conversations is what it sounds like. So you think it's learning from you? I would hope so. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I mean, if Galen, you could type in there, do you know what the bark method is in real estate and see if it spits it out now if it learned. But it, it definitely learns from you because I've I, I noticed though, especially on if you're looking at the user interface on the left hand side, there's like all the, your conversations, mm-hmm. and it'll definitely pull from stuff that you've searched. And kind of like it, when it's using through its database, like, all right, this is probably what he's, but it, it needs you to narrow it down by the questions that you ask. Yeah. But that's still amazing. Yeah. Just to think about, you know, where you could kind of go. Um, I was using it for like, same as you, reels and, and content creation. And I was just thinking, you know, there's certain like segments of reels that I put out that are just mostly just motivation, inspiration. So I just said, I was like, hey, ChatGPT, give me an inspiring <laughs> short uh, monologue. Uh, that I can use on Instagram about real estate, and it like broke out this thing for me, and like I didn't, I couldn't use all of it because some of it was just like too high minded. It was like this is data, but you were able to like form a outline from that, yeah, and then use that. So if you're a person that says like I know I need to use video, I know that's the future, but I just don't know what to say. Well, this is a way that you can use that to say. Here's some content. Yeah. You're going to blow your clients and your friends and your family's minds because they're just gonna be like, I didn't know he had it in him. Yeah. I didn't know that he was capable of, you know, conjuring these thoughts and minds. And there's there's tons of people like that. Like once you overcome that terrifying feel of being in front of the camera. Yeah. Now your next step is like, what am I going to say? What What is going to be interesting? And this is kind of helping you with that. Well, that's half the battle is knowing what to, uh, what to say. Yeah, yeah. so much being on camera, getting over the fact that you're going to be on camera. People hate public speaking so much, so this yeah, is so kind of like a help with that. something quick or whatever to kind of give you something. So that that's one thing that we've been using heavily, again, is, is content creation. So not only taking other content and converting it into short form, uh, pros and cons, summaries, whatever, but then even if there's, again, something you don't understand, being able to do the research on it as well, maybe terms like, you know, new agents, right? I'll be like, oh, well, you know, on commercial properties, typically we get an LOI before we get a contract. And then a new agent's like, well, what's an LOI, right? Yeah. 
Well, it's a, a letter of intent. So you could pop into chat GPT. Hey, what's LOI mean in the term of commercial real estate? And it'll break it all down for you. So, and again, you do want to fact check this stuff, right? You don't want and they, to. And they tell you that. They're like, don't. Don't be the guy. But I, I'm also of the mind that even if you don't fact check everything, if you put out enough com- content, people are not really like looking. But you don't want to be like the guy like spreading false information. And you're like, the Burr method is great. <laughs> so is our Russian overlords. And you're like, what did that blog just say? Right. So, you know, want to get, give it some thought. I naturally, you, it would make sense that as, as we were discussing this morning, I said, hey, ChatGPT, about to be in the studio. I'm about to sing your praises. Uh, how can I use you? in my real estate business. Okay. And <laughs> ChatGPT, I've been, I've been saying he, but I mean, you know, that's just how my brain works, but he cranked out uh, four things that you right. can use. You want, you want to, you want to hear them? I do. All right. So one, um, I'm just going to say it because I know Jared's going to want to go talk about it, but we're just going to list these for us because this is a big one that I know Jared loves for it. Generating property descriptions. Oh, did it give you that for real? That was the number that's my, one. That's my next thing. <laughs> that's why I said. I was like, I know he's going to say that's the number Chat one. Chat GPT, you're taking my content before I can take it. <laughs> she, All right, hold on. So stop there. We, but no, we're going to list the four okay, and you okay. can explain it. Okay, okay. Chat GPT is like, or did you take my content? Uh, number two, creating marketing materials. Okay. Um, and it's just talking about generating copy for emails, blog posts, social mm-hmm. media, brochures, all that stuff, which is great because we hate doing that stuff. Yeah. Uh, number three, answering frequently asked questions, which you just mentioned, mm-hmm. like explaining terms, uh, customer inquiries. I like this though. It said GPT could be trained to respond to common questions about real estate and used to assist with customer inquiries, freeing up time for more complex tasks. So I'm assuming that at one point you can kind of integrate this into your website okay, and so that people can ask questions. I don't know. Well, like that's the future, but that's just, not, and then the last one was provide personalized recommendations. Chat GPT could be used to generate personalized recommendations for properties based on buyer's preferences and budget. So I think I don't I don't know how you integrate Chat GPT into it or how that will work in the yeah, future. Yeah, exactly. That's what but I, I have asked it a couple things about about like setting up even chat bots because it said you could talk to customers for me. But then when I asked to break it down, it gave me other software AI to look up where you could create. Okay. And it, again, it's helping you, but it essentially says, hey, talk to sh- my cousin. Yeah, you should get this bot and then this plugs into Instagram and then you can kind of put in your response. It's kind of like we have our AI on our website if we mm-hmm. wanted to set up something similar on social. The first one that it brought out, though, generating property cool. descriptions. I hate doing property. There is no realtor mm. who has written a property description for like. You get the listing. You don't finish it and be like, man, that's going to sell the house. You meet the clients. You take the pictures. You set it up, all this stuff. And now you've got to write this paragraph. And I don't know about you, but when I'm writing these halfway through, I'm like, is anyone even going to read this? No. It's the pictures that matter. Sometimes I just want to buy, see pictures, see pictures, see pictures, and just like move on with my life. There's realtors that are like, they pride themselves on the write-ups. All right, forget those realtors. Listen to this, guys. My clients never read that stuff. Hold on, you ready? This beautifully maintained Cape Cod is located on a generous 0.92 acre lot and Mm. offers just under 2,000 square feet of living space, as well as ample outdoor living spaces, including a large screen porch, patio with pavers, a deck overlooking the park light fenced backyard. This home boasts numerous upgrades, including double pane replacement windows, a 50-year roof replaced in 2005, hardy plank sidings, gutter guards, and a crawl space with electricity and workshop area. The crawl space was encapsulated. The primary shower was just remodeled, and the carpet was just replaced in the living room. Hardwood floors throughout most of the house. Don't miss your chance to make it your own. Schedule a showing today. Chad GPT wrote that for me. And that, to me, <laughs> is just as good or even better than the agent that spent 45 minutes like, as you walk down the illustrious <laughs> how, how did pan. you start off by plugging that in? I took the last sale and I copied their description. And then I made sure that anything that was different or new was taken out or added. And then I pasted it in. And I said, write me a proper description on my new listing. Here's all of the details. And then it rewrote it all for me. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and so it's so like, it normally much, takes like, I mean, it doesn't take that long, but let's no. say it takes you like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It will feel can, like an eternity. I can do the rest of the whole listing in like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, it takes most agents like an hour and a half. I can do like a whole listing in like 10 minutes. But then the, the remarks is like another 10 to 15. Like it doubles my time. Yeah. When I'm adding, I always skip it and go, I'm like, this is the last thing. I it do. is the last it's like, thing, this I, thing I hate. And it's like, as you wonder, I'm like, Chad GBG just saved, like, even if it saved me three seconds, mm-hmm. it saved my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so, like, I'm like, oh, I feel 
and that's that's what AI should do, like reduce your stress yep. and make your workload and make you like not lose your hair and get stressed out and stuff like that. <laughs> so, so when you're thinking about when you're That was a dig. <laughs> no. That was a <laughs> well, dig. Well, sorry about that, that, I did sir ask GBT like about that and like gave me like a lot of things that Mike should be doing. So, all right. <laughs> So sorry, that's a side note. Poor Mike's losing his hair, and Galen's making fun of him, and not in the place him. where you normally lose hair. He's losing hair in like the side of his head, not the top of his head. It's just why can't it be like my chest or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, things you shave already, <laughs> things he's already been waxing. Very cool. So so all right. So let's look at um, we we talked about property descriptions. Like, listen, if you're a real estate agent, you just why you just tuned in and you saw that that alone. Should be just enough. tuned in like we're what like we're on the radio. I'm just thinking about. You. <laughs> Are we on the radio? like you like you like they just like hit you the video and click in. this second. <laughs> if you just tuned in right at this moment in the podcast, like, I, I think about like how I look at YouTube stuff. It's like fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, drop. So that's how I'm like. If you just dropped to that point, we just gave you a huge nugget. Uh, creating marketing materials. Um, we don't do a blog and I think we've got access opportunity to do it on our website mm -hmm. and yeah, I think we, we just didn't do it. We should do it because it was it's like, do I work. want to do it's So now work. it's like, we've got the answer where you can just, we should, we, we should, should take we should start seconds. building that in. I wonder if it does. I don't think people even read it, but you know, mm -hmm. it's just, just something to have. No, but it's good for, it's good for Google. Yeah. And, and it's good for so SEO. we, we can, you know, we can take a look at that, reach out to our international partner and see if, you know, we can somehow incorporate that in there. Yeah, 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 that would be good. I mean, ultimately, what we're trying to get you guys to understand if you're looking at this technology is we're pivoting. This is a pivotal point in, in our industry, in every industry, where with software like this, you can essentially go from spending X amount of hours doing a task to a much shorter amount of time reviewing a task, right? Because if you wrote a blog post every day and it took you an hour to do and ChatGPT can do it in 30 seconds, yes, you will spend time reviewing, editing, making sure it's what you want, but it, you essentially 10x your time. So that's what you should be I'm with you on trying that. to focus on ChatGPT with is how do I get this to maximize my time so instead of doing a menial task, I'm reviewing the menial task that it did. And in some ways, it's not menial task because if you're encoding and computing and this thing is doing your job for you, I mean, we always thought, not we as in me as a person. Went to your boss, like they're like, wait, I don't even need these guys anymore. <laughs> well, I, so people always typically thought that with AI and robots and computers, essentially it would get rid of the lower end workers first and then it would move its way up until it gets rid of the smartest minds, right? But what we're seeing with this is it's actually the reverse, right? We still need the guy that's going to go out and do manual labor, right, as a blue collar work. Because how do you get a computer to do that, right? I mean, that's going to be the hardest thing to replace in some yeah. aspects don't get me wrong there are there's robotic farm equipment and there's different things that are trying to make this possible or restaurant you know screen cues and all that stuff to get rid of some workers but hypothetically we always thought you'd work your way up and it's actually the reverse right now it's so interesting because you can replace like higher management your coders your 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 people that have like the best brains in the industry and this thing's just like it ah. freed them up to do something else <laughs> <laughs> they, they can now <laughs> do something else with their well, time. I always look at programs also as like, how can it work in my favor? How can I like stretch it out for to work for me? Not so much like keep it just this, just just this, and that's it. Like try to like figure out a way to uh, curve it to use it for something else also like having different ideas for it. And that, and that's kind of the the whole purpose of this show right now. It's just like showing people how they can use that in. In their business, yeah, right? If it's you're like, watching on YouTube, you should comment up if you can think of some other stuff to use it for with real estate. So, oh yeah, like I think that was one of like our blog posts or our reels or stories just the other day. It was just like, I haven't, what, I haven't what are you using yet. it? Yeah, I, I think, but I, like we had like a, a do a I have story. that yet? Have what yet? Is that real back done yet? What did I just send you? You sent me something. What did you just post? I posted this thing on the cost of living in Richmond. Oh no! Yeah, yours. It's, it's ah, back. son of a gun. I thought that's what you were doing tomorrow. 
Did you do your chat GPT? Um, so you did your first. I did a mindset one. Mm. Uh, we're just talking about content creation. What we use. That's all we do. Sorry, we're um, sidetracking. And uh, yes, it's in the Google. I, oh, that's tomorrow. what I was referring to the other day. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, we'll do it tomorrow. Um, yes. But <laughs> but I, I asked people. I said like, what would you use it for? Whether you're in real estate or not. Whether I mean, I'm interested. In, like, how would you use it in like loans and things yeah. like that, or appraising and stuff like that? Just so, what would you use it for? And uh, we, we got some we got some silly responses. It's but like, but it's very interesting to think about the fact that obviously it's pulling from all things on the internet but as this grows out i don't know what we'll do as far as i don't know what the company's going to do as far as access but i just think if anybody can take this and access it whether you pay for it or not the options are incredible because it, from a real estate sim i think about it from sales if you remember back to 2018 google uh, demoed its AI and it never released it. I don't know if they just thought this is too dangerous or it's not good enough or we just don't know. We don't want to give this to people. I don't know what the deal was. They renamed it and then released it to someone else. But but if you yeah without the liability. But but if you watch the demo, it was a demo of an AI calling up a salon and setting up a hair appointment for the person. Right. So just like we talk to Google now and it, it does our like phone assistant stuff. Essentially, you ask the phone, hey, call my salon, set up an appointment for me at 11 a.m. on Wednesday next week. And it makes the call and it sounds just like a real human. And it says, hey, I'd like to set up an appointment for Cindy at 11 a.m. on Wednesday next week, right? And it had a full conversation, even with ums and word whiskers. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. back up. Yep. This is a virtual person. Yep. Yes, that but it sounds exactly like Internet. a real person. What's that called? No, no, they never released it. It's Google. So, oh, okay. so Google has they it assisted. You know, Google and it, it screens. Because okay, I have stuff so, app where you can. Tell so it Google screens your calls and stuff like that. And it does the stuff where it talks to it for you. This was like next level, and they never came out with it. But I don't know if they're still planning. If they're just working on it. The point I'm trying to make is that for the future of this. It's insane to think because if a real estate company like EXP could take chat GPT right. and, and, and put voice to it just like Google's doing, which obviously they can, you know what I mean? We could ultimately make it listen to a thousand sales calls of ours, right? It could be tagged in to listen to every real estate sales call we make, and at some point... It can be making our cold calls for us. Call all of my expires. Way better than uh, than our agents because our agents don't want to make calls, right? So it would be like right now, who's our best employee? Me. No. Oh, come on. Second best employee. Uh, Raya. Raya. Raya <laughs> is our <laughs> Raya is our artificial intelligence that's built in right this second to our to our text messaging and our CRM platforms and it has conversations with our clients 24/7 but it, it's very narrow minded on the real estate it, it it it's it's programmed and it's good but if you talk to it long enough you get you get the drift so you want to take over as quickly as possible but at some point it can be having full phone conversations and i think we will reach a point where when you call a customer service lineup and you start talking to a person you're going to not know if you're talking to an AI or if you're talking to a real person. Then you're going to ask it, am I talking to an AI? And what do you hope they say? I mean, if it's me, I'm going to say, I hope I'm talking to the AI. Yes. Why? Because it's listened to 2,000 calls and it knows exactly how to solve the problem and talk to you, unlike somebody in a call center somewhere. The AI somewhere wasn't late for work. The AI doesn't have an attitude problem. The AI is just there to it's get It's just it like, out. I know exactly what you need and I'm here to fix it for you and I'm going to fix it for you right now. I was explaining that to someone else because when you call, like, you know, Comcast or one of those companies, you're like, zero, zero, speak to an operator, human, human, human. Soon I'm going to be like, uh, less human, like zero, 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 one, 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 only the AI, please. Like, I, I only want to talk to that. I love the app stuff I use because it's a virtual assistant. Like, to, um, the other day I needed to send out flowers. And I said, hey, on this day, I need to send, send flowers, make it to there or whatever, at $60 or whatever. Yeah. And it just does it. Does it. I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think there's a lot in the future for this that's going to be used. I just think it's so exciting because it's changing everything. Get it now if you can. As we speak. Start now. So anything else? We're getting we're like way late on this one. Yeah, no, but I think we've goes. covered some of the big things that you as real estate agents should be using ChatGPT right now. I mean, this is the future. Um, we're using it. We're demoing it. Feel free to do the same. If you have any questions 
uh, feel free to hit up me or Jared and say like, what what else could I use ChatGPT? We've got a long list of wild ideas in which we we were mad scientists last week. I Man. feel like we were just like, and then you could do this with it. I was so, so it's pumped. An I was yeah. so happy last week. You could not. I just got down. back from vacation, and Jared's like, hey, can I talk to you real quick? And I was like, yeah, sure. And you're like, <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, what's I was going like, on? You've been gone for too long. We have so much to talk about. You know what we missed? You just missed the greatest electronic revolution of our lifetime while you were in Florida. I did, and I I like I was in on a little bit because I knew about the app called Replica and we talked about mm -hmm. that before. Replica is like one that I was reading about where basically you've, you've got to acknowledge that it's an AI, but it's like a guy like just talking to a girl or a girl talking mm -hmm. to a guy and like it responds like GPT does and it's yeah. like very you know, realistic and stuff like that. And I was just like, is this similar to that? And you were like, yeah, it was. And I was like, but this is way less disgusting. It's gonna, uh, But it's going to get that. weird because think about it. Tinder could use this to analyze all of their conversations across an entire year basis, right? If they bought mm -hmm, that information mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. Bumble, give, give Tinder, it to me, it Match, all of it. Right, And right. then okay. make it talk to people from a dating level. Oh, Think about this. You people will fall in love with robots because it knows exactly what to say and what not to say in every single instance. And then if it can literally create a picture and literally create a video and literally because you can use the app to create. I don't know if it's their app, but they've been blown. It's been blowing up lately, too. Have you watched the AIs where it's like uh, we want to see people from, you know, what they look like? If they're Indian and they're from this state, yep. it, but, it, but it makes a, like a photograph of a person. It's not a painting. It's photograph, but it's not a real person. So it can literally build a human that does not exist. Now you're sending it off. And and you can give it a voice and you can turn it into a video. You and you married. Can, and you can make it love you and, and literally take your personality traits and be like, what what does he hate and what does he like? People are already marrying robots in Japan. It's just a matter of time before there's like a legitimately good robot that you just print out and we're living in Westworld. Man, this we're living is in wild. Westworld. It's this just is <laughs> so, but this is great. This is great. I mean, obviously, you can always think of the, the negative stuff, but just think about all the cool things that you can do with. Yeah. GPT. If we lose our wives, we may end up marrying robots at some point. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just Cloning kidding. Yourself. That's right. All right. Underscore underscore the Davis Group. You can so find me questions. there. You can find him at your realtor's favorite realtor RVA. Right. That's correct. Uh, you can email us, Galen and Jared at centralvarealty.com. Galen and Jared. We have a group email now. It just works better. Uh, you can set up a Calendly appointment with us if you want to learn about how to partner with us, how we can help you grow your business. We're helping people in I think eight or nine states right this second that have partnered with us. So. Feel free to check out that if you'd like to see what we can do to help you grow your real estate company. We appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, comment below, and we will see you next time. If you have a real estate question that you would like to ask Jared or Galen, reach out to them at jared at centralvarealty.com or galen at centralvarealty.com. Who knows? It may even be featured on an upcoming episode.